Okay, so here's where I wanted to get to. I'm at 3rd, Northwest 3rd in Gleason. Here's the beautiful old fire station that I hope doesn't get torn down, even though it's so beat up and it sustained a fire recently. And we're kind of getting to the edge of the sketchiness. You see some nice apartments up here on the other side of the train tracks. And then Union Station is right there in the distance. And yeah, I love this spot. And I'm here to talk about concerns about places being demolished like this one. Not because of this place, but because what is right down the block from here. This building is the Blanchett House, more, more well known as the Blanchett House of Hospitality. Now, a little less than 10 years ago, they built a new Blanchett House, this big structure here, which that also explains why there's a lot of homeless people because the Blanchett House tries to do what they can to you know, help feed people, help people that are in transitional periods and whatnot. It's a much larger structure now that can help more people and it's obviously in better condition. Um, than the original Blanchett House, which has been just kind of sitting over here. It hasn't really been used since the new construction. And so it's just sitting here with a fence around it, kind of awaiting its fate. Now, one may wonder, why should anyone care so much about a building like this that's crumbling, especially if its primary purpose as the Blanchett House, which you can see the old letters are kind of, that used to say Blanchett House. Why care so much about this battered old building in the middle of a rougher part of town when you've got a new building right next door? Well, this place wasn't always the Blanchett House. So yeah, this building was built... Whoa. The Blanchett House here was built in 1905. And the whole Blanchett House of Hospitality thing is actually a thing that stemmed from some University of Portland students. It didn't really become a thing, I want to say, till the early 1950s. Waiting for, the, waiting for the train horn. And I never knew this, but this place was originally called the Yamaguchi Hotel. It was one of the only places in the city, you know, it was very rare that if you were a person of color that you could run your own business. And this was one of the only places that that was run by Japanese um, immigrants that had come to Portland. So this has rich, rich significance to the Japanese history of this city, of which, you know, there's not a whole lot left. And, you know, you look around and it's like, yeah, this is Chinatown today. You can, you can tell because the street signs, you can see it's like clearly Chinatown. Um, but this area, North Portland, kind of the area where Chinatown is today, was essentially the part of town where anybody who was a person of color would be kind of pushed into. If you were Chinese, if you were Japanese, if you were African American, you were forced into this part of town, the, the North End. And it wasn't really until like the early 1900s that that remotely started to change. And so there's not really a whole lot in relation to the Japanese, especially early Portland Japanese culture. There's not really a whole lot um, in terms of like tangible buildings like this that still exist. And that's, that's what's made this so important. So what's happened recently, and it's I guess going to come up for a vote June 30th, so less than two weeks from my recording this. I think it's the 15th today. So essentially, the Blanchett House still owns this. This is still below. So they have the ones that have control over it. And as I read it, they want to demolish this primarily because they just, it's falling apart and they don't really have any use for it. There's no practical use for it anymore, especially when they have this building here. And like, that's good and fine. I'm certainly not gonna criticize the Blanchett House that's done more for these people than I ever have. But, you know, there's been opportunities that this city has had to try to preserve significant elements of its history in terms of aspects of history that aren't 
just driven by white people. The gray building that was in Northeast Portland over here, major uh, significant ties to uh, Portland's black history. And it was sitting there kind of falling apart and like there was talks of making maybe like a museum out of it or something and it, it never happened and it got demolished a couple of years ago and now this building sitting here surrounded by fencing and you wonder if it's if it's days are numbered if it's going to be demolished and you know I, I'm, I'm not blind like this place is in pretty rough shape I, I don't deny that one bit it really hasn't even been used I don't know if it's been used for anything since uh, the new place opened and it's just been kind of sitting here. The first time I saw this place was in 2016 with my girlfriend and I took some pictures of it and that was the first time I'd ever seen this building or knew it existed and you see there's a U on there that means this is unstable like if a fire happens firefighters need to be concerned. So yeah this place is certainly in rough shape and I acknowledge it would cost quite a bit of money to fix it up. Um, and if they can't, they can't. My only hope is that, you know, they don't just hastily demo this thing like the city likes to do with buildings all the time. Let's see, here's the notice for the public hearing. Um, yeah, so June 14th was the public hearing. But see, it says um, the first review is Wednesday, July or June 30th, 2021. And again, I, you know, it's rough, it's falling apart. Um, if, if they are going to keep this place standing, like I would obviously want them to do something with it. If they're not going to do something with it, then maybe, uh, you know, I mean, obviously with the history it has, even if you just leave it here as like a memory, I would be fine with that. You know, I'm fine with places that are just kind of kept where they are and left alone because of their rich history, even if they are falling apart. There's a home in little town of Laterell, Oregon, and it's called the Laterell Home. It's where I think the son of the town's founder lived. And it's been left to fall apart for like 40, 50 years, but they still leave it there in ruin because of the significance it has to that little town. So even if you were just gonna leave this building here, it's kind of like, I'd be okay with that, but I would almost also hope that they would fix it up and do something with it. And I understand that that costs money. That's, you know, fixing everything inside, you know, uh, restabilizing it, getting all the electronics fixed, making sure it can withstand an earthquake. Pretty much all the stuff they did for um, probably about, just a few blocks down that way, the Harlow Hotel, which was sitting in ruin for a long time and then somebody went in they got it all fixed up and it looks great now and it's a functioning hotel again and if they just did that to kind of revive an old falling apart hotel that hadn't really been used for anything in forever why can't they do something of significance for a building like this this building's like half the size of harlow block which harlow block is like its historical name but it's a hotel again so i kind of like the idea of calling it harlow hotel and i think you know again I know, this stuff costs money, I get that. But again, the city has many times when they've had the chance to save tangible things like this that are in relation to the history of people in this area that are people of color, specifically. And they've dropped the ball many times, but then, you know, they put these, you know, murals up and all this stuff and they make it, they talk about how great and diverse and welcoming of a city Portland is, and then they don't preserve history like that. A lot of times they just say, oh, well, you know, sucks, too bad, we're gonna demo it anyway. And I think because it's kind of small, you know, it's not massive. It's like if this building was falling apart, it would take like three, four times as much money, if not more, to fix up. But this building's not that big. I would love to see, you know, possibly a, um, Japanese history museum made out of that. Maybe just Portland's um, population from Asia in general, since it is Chinatown now. It could even be, oh, it could even be a general museum for like just the history of Portland's population that are people of color, whatever nation they're from. Because again, 
back in the old days, anybody who wasn't white was shoved up to this specific area to live anyway. And that building is right in the middle of all of that. So I take any one of those kind of museums and you know that that history is so obscure to a lot of people and hell I still have a lot more to learn about it but Portland's African-American history which isn't great in many aspects but Portland's African-American history their uh, Chinese history their Japanese history um, their Korean history uh, you know many of these um, people from these different lands were that helicopter's, I'm sorry, there's a helicopter that's flying really low over here. Um, but yeah, those, those histories are not really all that well known and not really that well taught in terms of Portland. And yet these people were every bit as critical, you know, in fact, a lot of times more so than white people to, you know, how, why this city is the way it is, the history of the city, how it's become what it is. People can stand on their soapboxes and talk all day about how much, you know, I'm talking about white people. We talk about how diverse you are and how much, hey, I got black friends, which is of course something that every racist says. You know, we can all sit here and talk and we can paint pretty pictures and we can put up pretty murals and we can give places cute names and act like that respects history. It's particularly history of people who aren't white that have come out of this city. And that's great and all, but those are cheap, easy ways of showing your gratitude and your appreciation for a whole chunk of the city's populace that they add to this history so much. And that's what I would really love to see. I know the city would probably find every reason in the world to say, oh, the finances aren't there, it's not feasible. It's in a rough part of town. I get that, but you know what? There's a lot of kind of pseudo bougie spots in Chinatown that a lot of people with extra money in their pockets go to to eat, even though there's lots of homeless people around and all that. So I don't know if that's enough for me to say, oh, well, I guess we're just not gonna do it. I think that would be a great, a great step in terms of um, not just appreciating history of those that aren't white from the city of Portland, but giving people literally a place to go to, to see that personally. Uh, people would learn a lot about shit they know nothing about. And again, I've, I've spent a lot of time delving into that element of history, the history that people that aren't white the effects they've had on this city. And as I said, I still have so much more to learn on that. So if I've actually been taking the time to read up on some of that history, and I still know there's a lot more for me to learn, what does that say about a lot of people out here in this city that talk a good game about racism and respecting the history of people of all colors and saying that black lives matter without taking that as though you're saying black lives only matter, which is how some people take it. I just think so much could be gained. So many people, you know, people can talk all they want about history. And a lot of people in this city like to whitewash the hell out of history anyway. But if you actually give them a place to go to that really has that history, has physical pieces of that history, real information, not biased information, not whitewashed history, real information. And you have people of color that are directly involved. In fact, taking the lead on how this place should be set up, made and organized, and you put it all under one roof, a place that used to be at one time, a Japanese run hotel back in a time where people of color weren't allowed to really ever run businesses that often. And you know, the fact that it was the one time Blanchett House of Hospitality that's just another nice little piece to it. I just think that's what I would really like to see done. And I know I don't have any political power and I know it's easy for me to say that when I'm not the one that's you know, funding the whole thing, but I just feel like 
the city of Portland's gonna act like they're a city of tomorrow and they're a city of respectability and they're a real city that really does value uh, things like um, diversity and respecting the city's history in all of its facets, not just the ones that the white people controlled, then they need to start preserving spots like that. They have all the reason in the world to. And it's not even like there's big plans for it. They're just kind of saying, let's demolish it because it doesn't really serve a purpose anymore. But it does. So it's not even like they have plans to build an office building or another hotel or some crap there. They would demolish that building and that land would sit there vacant for 20 years with no purpose. So what's the sudden rush to get rid of that history? And again, I'm not criticizing the Blanchett House of Hospitality. I'm not saying like, why are you doing this? I just know that if this goes forward with Portland's track record, they have a tendency to just like, oh, someone wants to put up a permit, they want to demolish something. Well, let them do it. Because we've seen so much of this city's history and its structures and in its beauty just completely destroyed over the past 10 years. Because people just don't stop and take enough time to think about what they're truly getting rid of. So, sorry, it's getting loud, but with that particular issue forthcoming very soon, by the end of this month, and you know, I was passing through here anyway, I really wanted to stop there and just talk about that building and the history that's kind of generally unknown. I didn't know it until a week ago. So I thought, you know, I just want to go out there and show that and talk about that because I like talking about buildings that, you know, may or may not be there one day. I like to know that I got it on film or got some pictures of it, what have you. So I just, I really hope the right thing is done and this place is preserved. At least, at least that much, you know. So that's all. That's all I just wanted to, just wanted to talk about that a little bit. And uh, all that said, thank you for stopping by listening to me rant for a while. I really appreciate it because obviously this stuff is important to me. And, um, you know, thank you for supporting the channel, for supporting what I do, for supporting me. And um, as always, remember to like, share, subscribe, hit up my Patreon. I'm always posting extra stuff there for you. So you'll get extra stuff if you sign up there today. And of course, the, the link to that is in the description with this video, as well as the links to my Instagram, Facebook, and I can't go that way. The links to my Patreon, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and my Reddit subreddit. They're all there for you to peruse. And all that said, till next time, think about your buildings and cherish them because one day they may be gone. This has been Steve, the amateur historian, and I'll see you next time.